our Father everlasting, the all-creating One, God Almighty. And through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior, I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. judge and our defender suffered and crucified forgiveness is in you descended into darkness you rose in glorious light forever seated high I believe in God our Father the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in the virgin birth I believe in the saints communion and in your holy church I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again for I believe in the name of Jesus I believe in God our Father I believe in Christ the Son in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I'm in a really good mood. Jordan, do you know why I'm in a good mood? This is baseball related, isn't it? Hmm. I think Heather knows more about sports than you do. Uh, yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's Michigan football, go blue. And she doesn't care. Yeah. Oh, there, there's wow. going to. <laughs> okay. There's going to be. It just got real. A baseball season. Yay. Major League Baseball. And I, I, I kind of put it out there last mm. week. As a teaser. A little bit that I thought I was last week about optimism. Yes. We talked about optimism. I was very optimistic that there would be a baseball season. Looks like there's going to be one. We are going to have a major league season. Um, I would be wearing my hat, but um, we have to go film 
for the sermon right after this. Yes. Accurate. And uh, I, you know. Your hair looks lovely this evening, Well, thank Sam. you. Thank you. Um, that's not the compliment I was looking for. But, oh, oh, but. Zach, Wait, there's more. Zach, come over here. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, stellar. Look at that. I am stellar. sporting the Tampa Bay Sox. Because I can, and I know some of you have wondered about my hats. I've heard from you. <laughs> I like the hats I like. There's been a great outcry. I, I wear the hats that I want to wear, and I wear them the way that I want to wear them. Um, no, for real? Like I, someone shamed you for that? I, no, 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 no. No one shamed oh, me. Okay. They, tr- right. they just tried to tell me, and, and there's a few people that just said, you know, you, your hats are a little funny. And I said, I like, I like my flat brimmed hats. How's that funny? Uh, well,. <laughs> I'm a 40-year-old man, and I shouldn't be dressing like, you know, I'm 15, but I don't I don't care. Is 40 old? I don't know. Probably not. Oh, okay. I, I don't want to be old, <laughs> so no. <laughs> oh. No, and, you know, so I'm in a good mood. In spite of the fact that the way you positioned the chairs tonight, I'm about six inches removed from the fan um so what a wonderful ceiling fan you is. <laughs> I like that i'm centered on your you side. both yeah you both get the breeze i don't but uh well, see i've got this thing pressed up against my my midsection <laughs> for like a half hour <laughs> so it, when I, I, I never take it away because as soon as i do it's just a giant sweat mark yeah so yeah <laughs> accurate well tonight hey you know okay <laughs> back to the topic you know another thing that i'm excited about New series on Sunday. I always love starting a new sermon series. Uh, So we're going to be in a series called We Believe. And we're going to be starting with one of the most important things of what we believe. We're going to be talking about the Bible. What is in the Bible? What is the Bible? Why do we have so many translations? What is it with these 66 books, 39 in the old, 27 in the new? We're going to be talking all about these uh, concepts with the Bible and introducing our church to some very important things about what we believe about the Bible. And I'm going to be taking to taking you tonight to a verse in Romans 15. So go ahead and get your Bibles. Go ahead and go get them. Turn them on. Romans 15 is where we're, is where we're going to be tonight. We'll be looking at one verse. Uh, so go ahead and open your Bibles there, Romans 15. Uh, but before we do that, I want to introduce to you two uh, wonderful people, Ed and Terry Hawks. Um, They are uh, faithful, faithful members of our church. They have served in many different areas of our church. Uh, But one area that they love serving is in our student ministry. And uh, they're going to be praying for our students and uh, telling us a little bit about graduation, uh, which we're going to be having a graduation Sunday this Sunday. So another reason to be there, uh, along with a new series, we're going to be celebrating our seniors and uh, congratulating them for a job well done uh, with graduating high school. So Ed and Terry, please pray for us tonight. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, It is good to be able to be meeting back together again. And uh, just just so you're aware, this coming Sunday, we're going to be recognizing all of our graduating seniors. So we thought it'd be nice to take a minute and just pray for them. So Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us the privilege as a church to walk alongside um, those who are moving forward into another stage of life right now. Um, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being able to watch them um, as young children and now growing into adulthood, Lord, and um, just being able to see how they have grown and matured in understanding and who you are. Thank you for the opportunity that we've had to be able to serve alongside each and every one of them, Lord, and just to um, be so appreciative of the differences that you have created in each one of us and how you will use them for your glory. Father, uh, what a joy it is to be able to gather uh, together. Uh, Lord, thank you for the opportunity for us to uh, be able to join together again in corporate worship. Uh, Father, and then this coming week as we look uh, at our graduating seniors, Father, what a joy it has been to be able to uh, see them grow and to come alongside them in ministry and to help them uh, just to learn more about you. Uh, Father, that is our prayer for each and every one of these young men and women as they continue to go forward, God, that they would continue to value their relationship with you above all, that they would continue to seek you, and that you would continue to bless them, and that you would continue to guide them in the way that you would have them to go. Uh, God, you have blessed us with some awesome seniors, and we just really can't wait to see what you're going to do in their lives. Uh, Lord, just uh, as I said earlier, continue to bless them and guide them 
and may they honor you with their lives. Uh, Lord, we love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is thy help and salvation. All ye who hear, now to His temple draw near. Join me in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, who o'er all things so wondrously reigneth, shelters thee under his wings, yea, so gently sustaineth. Hast thou not seen how thy desires there have been? Granted in what he ordained. Praise to the Lord, O oh, let all that is in me adore Him. All that hath life and breath come now with praises before Him. Let the Amen sound from His table again. Gladly forever adore Him. Let the Amen sound from His people again, gladly forever adore Him. What's your favorite thing about Scripture? Why don't you put that in the comments? And, you know, there's really no wrong answer. So if you're wondering, like, oh, my goodness, I've got to put something in the comments. What's the right answer? Th th there's no wrong answer. I'm just asking you what your favorite, th favorite part of Scripture is. It could be a favorite book, a favorite verse, um, maybe a favorite theme of the Bible or a particular doctrine that you love. Uh, so just, you know, maybe, maybe there's um, the way Scripture makes you feel, like maybe comforted. Uh, that's, that's one of my favorite things about Scripture is it, it just always seems to comfort me. Um, even, even the challenging passages, even the difficult passages, even the ones that are hard to understand, uh, even in, in digging and trying to figure them out, I, I find just great comfort in Scripture. So take a moment and uh, just put something in the comments section. What's your, what's your favorite thing about Scripture? Again, no wrong answer. Um, I think we can honor God by kind of encouraging each other. Maybe, maybe if you're posting a verse, maybe someone needs that verse tonight. Maybe the reason that God's saying, hey, put that verse in the comment section. Uh, maybe somebody else needs to read it. Um, so just take a moment, do that. The other thing that you can do is remember to uh, submit your prayer request, prayer.westb.org. Again, prayer.westb.org. Uh, we get prayer requests every week. We've got a prayer team that prays, and we're more than glad to pray for you. So if you do have a prayer request, um, you can put that in the comment section if you want everyone to see it, or uh, if you just want our prayer team to see it, uh, you can go to prayer.westb.org. So in thinking about um, kind of our favorite parts of Scripture, the favorite things we like about Scripture, again, on Sunday we're starting a new series. We're going to be talking about some of these things. There is one verse that I'm going to use in my sermon that I thought I would kind of introduce tonight um, as uh, and go a little deeper in it because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna camp on this verse on Sunday uh, so I kind of want to camp here tonight so let's go to Romans 15 and it's verse four and I'm just gonna read you this verse it's one verse uh, but there's a lot here it, it's pretty much the case with all of the Book of Romans uh, you kind of just have to go one verse at a time because each verse is so rich um, so Romans 15:4 for whatever was written in the past was written for our instruction, so that we may have hope through endurance and through the encouragement from the scriptures. So let's 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 walk through some of the, the phrases here, some of the words that are in Romans 15:4. For whatever was written in the past. 
this is kind of, th th one of the neat things about this verse is that it is scripture referencing scripture. And any time scripture represents scripture, or one part of the Bible quotes another part of the Bible, or the Bible speaks for itself, that's a very important thing, because it's God's word. Now, all of God's word is important. Every word that is here is important, no matter what book of the Bible, Old Testament or New. All of it is critical, and all of it is good for today. That being said, when scripture references itself, that should get your attention. And it says to us here, that whatever was written in the past, so referencing previous scripture, whatever was written in the past was written for our instruction. This is neat because you can know how to live. If you've ever had a moment where you didn't know what to do, certainly you've had that. If you've ever had a moment where, uh, or a season of life where you needed guidance or advice, often we talk to people. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, God gives us people so that we can have discernment in our life, so that we can have accountability in our life. But everything that we do, all advice that we give, all advice that we receive, needs to run through the filter or the lens of Scripture. It was written for our instruction. There's a lot of good books that are out there that aren't the Bible, and they're helpful. I mean, read those books. Whatever book encourages you, that, that's fine. But it needs to be validated by Scripture itself. Scripture is for our instruction. So, you know, it's, it's referencing itself here that all of it, all, all of it that's written in the past is, is good for us. It's for our instruction. By the way, we tend to get lost in ourselves, right? Whenever we try to make our own decisions, whenever we try to make our way. I don't know about you, but every single time that I've tried to make my own way, I've always ended up wayward. Hmm. And <laughs> I, I get off course. What God's Word does is God's Word helps keeps us on course. It keeps us rooted. It keeps us in our lane. God's got a lane for us. He's, he's, got a, he's got a pathway for us in our lives, and we don't want to get outside of that pathway. What Scripture does is it kind of puts guardrails on that, on that lane and, mm -hmm. and keeps us within our lane. So, good stuff here. For whatever was written in the past was written for our instruction. Scripture is, and we'll talk about this on, on Sunday, Scripture is infallible. Now, that's a kind of a big word. It sounds like a theological word, because it is. Um, but we shouldn't be afraid of theological words. Um, we should just take the time to learn them. So Scripture is infallible, and what that means is, is Scripture will never lead you astray. God's Word will never lead you astray. Why don't we read it more? If it's never going to lead us astray, why aren't we in it more? Why aren't we using Scripture for decisions that we need to make and for the lifestyle that we need to live and uh, for the discernment in our life and for the accountability in our life. I mean, it's infallible. It's never going to take you off course. For whatever's written in the past was written for our instruction. So there's another phrase here. It says, so that we may have hope. Here's the beautiful thing about God's Word. There's lots of beautiful things about God's Word, but here's one of them. God's Word brings you up. It doesn't take you down. Why does God give us His Word? not to bring us down, but to pull us up. Are there times when we read scripture and we're convicted? Yeah. Are there times when we read scripture and we, we feel um, a level of guilt because of sin in our life? Sure. But what God is doing is he's pulling us through a process of repentance, which ultimately brings us back closer to him. So even when we are challenged by scripture, even when uh, we are convicted by scripture, what God is doing it's he's pulling us closer to himself. Scripture doesn't pull you down. It brings you up. For whatever was, whatever was written in the past was written for our instruction so that we may have hope. That hope there pulls us up. Through endurance and encouragement from the scriptures. Now, in, encouragement and endurance here are connected concepts. Endurance referencing our perseverance. When you are saved by God, you can't unwind that. When you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, 
when Jesus comes into your life, when you surrender all to him, we sing that song on Sunday, I surrender all. When you surrender all to Jesus and you say, he is my savior and you choose Christ, you, you choose the cross and what that means and you choose the resurrection and the power of life. When you make that choice to give everything to Jesus because he has saved you, you, you can't unwind that. God saves and what God does, you can't unwind. Because the only reason that you could choose Jesus is because the Holy Spirit's already done a work in your life. And when the Holy Spirit does a work in your life, that's God working. It's not gonna get unwound. And so God preserves us as we persevere. So yes, we have a responsibility to do the right things in our life. We have a responsibility to serve God, to serve others, to be for the neighborhood, to be for the nations. This is the responsibility of the church. But we've got a good God all along the way that's preserving us as we persevere. And this endurance comes with encouragement. So you're, you're gonna have valleys in life, you're gonna have mountain peaks in life. As we persevere, as God preserves, we're gonna have our ups and downs. But through it all, we get encouragement. Where do we find this encouragement? We receive encouragement through the Holy Spirit, of course, but we also receive encouragement from the scriptures, as it says here in verse four. So one verse for tonight to kind of introduce the topic for Sunday. We're going to be talking about the Bible. Um, I hope you'll spend a lifetime studying God's word. Maybe you're just getting started. Um, you know, some of you have been believers for 50 years or longer. Uh, you're, you read the Bible through every year. That's wonderful. Don't ever stop learning. You, we don't ever arrive as believers. But others of you may be saying, you know what? I didn't even know there was a book called Romans. I had to look in the table of contents to find it. I had no idea what Romans is about, but now I know one verse. Maybe that's you. Maybe that's you tonight where you're like, I'm just getting started. Here is the great thing about what God wants for our lives. It's not about where it's, it's not about your past. Um, it's not about even really where you are right now. It's all about you moving forward from this place. Yeah. So whether you have a lot of Bible knowledge or very little, what God wants from you is a commitment going forward. Can't do anything about the past. Can't do anything about 20 minutes ago. Can't do anything about what happened yesterday. But what you can do from this point forward is to choose Christ, follow the Holy Spirit, rest in the Father's love, and to do God's will going forward. So wherever you are in your spiritual journey, as we say, it's a bit of a cliche term, but wherever you are, let's just move forward from here. And God will preserve as we persevere. The scriptures will give us encouragement. And through the discernment of the Bible, we'll know exactly how to live. Jordan? Let's sing about a beautiful name. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. You hid in glory and creation. Now we beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a beautiful name it is nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus You didn't want heaven without us So Jesus, you brought heaven down My sin was great, your love was greater What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is What a wonderful name
wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. And what a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Silence the voice of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. Now when to life again, and you have no rival, you have no equal. Jordan and Heather, I'm going to put you both on the spot now. Do you have a favorite Bible story? It's fine if you don't. I'm just curious. Don't overthink it, Jordan. Okay, so my favorite Bible story most recently has been the woman at the well. Yeah. And just the the number of barriers that Jesus broke through in one interaction. And... Jesus just, he just keeps on amazing and uh, there's nobody that's outside of his reach. What's amazing to me is that that's followed up very quickly with his meeting with Nicodemus. So you got, yeah. you got a woman who's, you know, according to some, just the height of sinners and then you've got the height of religious leaders and Jesus addresses them both exactly where they need him to address them. Hmm. I was going to ask you your views on Genesis 1 and 2, but Please we don't, don't but we don't have four more hours, so oh, it be it be pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you have a favorite Bible story? Oh, I have a favorite book. Yeah, no, that's great. Philippians. Oh, Philippians we is named awesome. Our child from Philippians. Everything Kalos. good, everything honorable, everything think on these things. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Cal. Yep. Kalos. Mm-hmm. K A L O S. He what? likes it, he likes to tell people it's the Greek word for handsome, and we're like it's a little bit more than handsome. He goes, buddy. okay, it's amazing. I'm amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'd say in the Old Testament, my favorite story and book is Jonah, and because it's it's a story of how you can get everything got everything wrong, like you can literally do everything wrong, and. God will still use you. Um, <laughs> God takes the most broken of people and still finds a way to use him, use them for his glory. So I love Jonah. Uh, and in the New Testament, I'd say my favorite story is the story of the blind beggar Bartimaeus. And uh, you can Google that and you can look it up for yourself tonight because uh, we don't have enough time for me to do a whole nother lesson on the blind beggar Bartimaeus, but it's a great story. Um, so check that out in the New, in the New Testament. Uh, it's in the Gospels. And uh, don't forget, this Sunday, um, we will be having our regularly scheduled services live. 
Uh, we will also be posting our services digitally. We're going to continue doing that for those of you who are not able to, to join us live. Uh, we will be celebrating our graduates, and we will be beginning a new sermon series called We Believe on kind of the core doctrines, not kind of, the core doctrines of our faith and our church, and I'm very excited about it. We've got some creative things that we're going to be doing, yes, actually. indeed. We've got some, we'll see how it fleshes out tonight because we've got to film it um so we'll, i don't no know pressure. yeah no pressure maybe it'll work maybe it won't huh? we, you'll find out sunday so we'll see you sunday at all of our five service times 8 9 30 and 11 at the west Braden campus a las diez y media in espanol and then 11 o'clock at our Southside campus and we will see all of you next time next week wednesday seven o'clock See you then.